वेलकम टू माई इमिग्रेशन स्टोरी आई एम योर होस्ट सुजाता रामटेके दिस इज एन ऑन गोइंग सीरीज वेर वी ब्रिंग टू यू स्टोरीज ऑफ इमिग्रेंट्स फ्रॉम वेरी बैकग्राउंड एंड वी होप टू शेड सम लाइट ऑन द चैलेंजेस एंड ट्राइम्स एक्सपीरियंसड बाय इमिग्रेंट्स इन अमेरिका एंड टूडे वी हैव विद अस एंजलो ट्रैक्सिस हेलो एंजलो हाउ आर यू डूइंग टूडे Hi Sujata thank you so much for uh, for having me and uh, giving yeah. the opportunity to share the story I appreciate it Of course um Angelo uh, tell our viewers um something like little bit about yourself like where are you from and what do you currently do uh, in America So I'm uh, born and raised uh, in Greece Athens um and uh, I came in the United States in 2012 and since then I'm in the United States in Massachusetts. Um what brought me here it was uh, everything. Um grew up uh, in a abusive uh, environment, either family environment or neighborhood, uh school, uh country. And um everything was going downhill in uh, in Greece and towards um the economic crisis and around 2012 I was in my head I was I had in my head like uh the idea of either staying and suffer or just leave the country and create something new. So that's what I left uh Greece and I came to United States uh, starting from below zero and uh what, what what was the visa you came in on? The visa you, you, I came with ESTA so I didn't come with a visa. I uh, came with a ESTA waiver that kind of you know you bypass the visa pr- process and you Explain have the what, three months what that is and how how can people someone from greece watching oh. this can can uh, you know have the same advantage as as you had that's beautiful so the esta waiver uh you bypass the, the process of the interview through the embassy and you just apply online and uh you give your passport number and you pay the fee that they have and then you kind of getting halfway accepted and uh they give you the application that you get accepted and halfway and then you're getting your ticket and then when you come to the states then the border control is going to either you know allow you to come in or no so that way you don't have to go through the embassy to say for example I want to I want to go to the United States so uh, you know for vacation and they might deny your visa because they're going to tell you you don't need that visa you need just to apply online Mm-hmm. um and um the esta you cannot uh change it to uh working visa student visa to anything else you can when you come in is 3 months very strict uh just you know tourists and a vacation time and then you just go back uh the only way to change the status of the, of the esta waiver visa <laughs> half visa <laughs> uh it's uh through getting married and um yeah that's the as to how i came uh, to united states because i didn't i didn't want to play with the odds of me getting denied to come to united states so i just uh did the application on the esta and and i came and i stayed to a friend that he helped me uh to come to the united states he bought me the ticket and i stayed to his house for a week and uh eventually i overstayed because i couldn't change my visa to any to anything else and mm-hmm. um back then also uh obama obama was a person that he changed uh that that opportunity for people when they came with the esta because before it was just esta you coming and there was no way to turn it around so obama changed it to was there a provision during that time for you to mm-hmm. kind of because you overstay uh excuse me can you repeat the question Yeah th- was there a provision for that particular time because you obviously you did not go back after 3 months you stayed right and there is mm-hmm. only one way kind of to get married and i'm assuming you didn't do that you you stayed yeah, yeah. so how how was the, how did you change that and what were the challenges in that so the challenges were that uh the only way to change it it was through getting married and um there you have two choices either fake it or make it real um so either you just faking a uh, a marriage and you kind of you know risking deportation or actually you know um uh making uh, the wedding you know some kind of valid somehow valid and then you getting the papers and uh, the challenge was I didn't want to do this I didn't want to risk it and I'm not that kind of person uh personality anyway I just wanted to happen if I'm going to get married it's going to be real 
And then, so the challenges were when you are illegal in the, in the States, you have, you're very limited to do uh, uh, anything. You have, uh, if you don't have a driving license, you can, uh, you just can drive only for a year. Um, and then if you don't have a driving license, of course, you cannot drive. A very limited jobs. Uh, you can work only uh, restaurants or, or gas stations, people that they allow uh, people to pay you under the table. Uh, you can do anything major. You cannot travel, um, and you cannot um, make a, a lot of money. Uh, you just work as much as you can, and with as much as they giving you, they, they pay you. Try to cover the gap uh, in money that they pay you because they underpay you. Um, yeah, for so many years, that was a challenge that I had, and I was uh, illegal in the states for nine years. And then I was working nonstop, like average 72, 84 hours per week. And for those nine years, and then I met my wife now. And yeah, that's how I got my papers through my wife. And yeah, the rest is history. Now we have a little baby. She's uh, almost 18 months. Yeah, everything turned out to a beautiful uh, story. Yeah. So when you got married, were there not like questions asked? <clears throat> you were here from last nine years, or the government just didn't know that you you exist and you are here. <clears throat> I apologize. Um, they were to me. I I heard stories um, that the government asking uh, questions like for taxes, uh, for references, for example, for taxes, or where were you working, uh, the money that you made, the taxes that you didn't report, uh, bank accounts, et cetera. But, but to be honest with you, I had not, none of these questions. The only questions that I had, it was only personal uh, mm -hmm. for me and my, and my wife. Um, and something that you had like a, a time limit to answer, you had like a, a second and a half to answer every question. You have to be very, very fast. Uh, in order to to kind of distinguish who's lying, who's saying the truth. And uh, it was many personal questions. Um, other than that, it was just paperwork, paperwork and, and the, the personal questions with, uh, with the government, nothing, nothing else. When you came from Greece to, to here, I'm assuming, <clears> the, you know, the economy declining there, a lot of unemployment, right? Uh, yeah. That's the reason because I was I followed that for some time um, back then um, mm -hmm. and kind of bit of aware of the of the situation and I'm not sure if it has improved quite a lot there but when you came here we like was there like a anything some something that felt like a cultural shock for you like this is America oh I never thought of this because we usually like you know have certain image of America because we watch TV, we watch movies and, um, you know, everything. But when you come here, you kind of like hit, like hit it and say, oh, this is not something I expected. Was, did you experience any of that? Share your that experience. Was, <laughs> that was my experience the very first hour. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's exactly uh, like you say, Sujata, is we, we're growing up in, um, uh, in a world that we, you know, the expo the exposure is Hollywood and movies and perfection and social social media with influencers and you know tall guys, super huge, big butts for the women, super houses, super cars, neighborhoods. You just like, wow, what is the United States, you know? And then you're coming, and then you see ghettos, you see homeless, you see bumps on the roads. <laughs> you see, you you yeah, you're listening about uh, um, all this kind of stuff that people are abusing the system and crime rates, and I was like, wow! And especially, it was so funny, a funny thing that um, in Greece we have very bad roads, and uh, they're full of bumps and everything. So when while we when we were driving in the United States, we had so many bumps, and I'm like, what is going on? Like, well, how is this possible? This is United States. I was like, this is United States. This is the United States. And I kept saying it, like, throughout the, my first week. And uh, I was like, oh, this is not possible. And then we're going to some, you know, we're driving around some bad neighborhoods, like uh, around Boston. Like, you're saying, you know, it cannot be. This is Boston. And then, you know, on the west and outside of Boston. And I couldn't believe it. And 
it was a very good shock. It was a very good hit um, for me because I understood that whatever whatever the exposure was is not true. And that also maybe double thinking uh, for the rest of my life that whatever I see online, whatever I see someone says something about a country or a person or a neighborhood or anything, it's better to go see yourself or maybe just double check, triple check with other sources because it's not what it seems it is. And then, yeah, that was the biggest shock. I was honestly, I was like, but this is United States. This is United States. And it was like, everything was different. Everything was different. So on on uh, on the other side, um, I, I haven't uh, read much about Greece, uh, but um, when we think of America, it we think of a free society, right? Uh, you know, expressing ourselves, uh, freedom to do whatever we want to do. Um, and coming from outside from US, I have experienced that. Uh, and with that, my thought process has changed uh, quite a lot. Um, I have become, I have started thinking more progressively. Um, you know, I never thought that I was regressive in, in any sort when I came here. But now when I look back, I feel that, oh, I was actually, you know, and now when I go back to my country, I can't stand those things, you know? Um, so for you, like what, when you came here, what was that one freeing thing that you thought like, you know, oh, this is the best thing here, like, which I, it doesn't exist in my country, but you know, this is something I, I can really, uh, you know, flourish into a any, anything that comes to your mind. Yeah. What you, what you just said, honestly, uh, um, it's on the point. Um, so it was nine years before I got back to uh, to Greece, and so many things changed. I changed, the country changed, people changed. Uh, nine years, many many things can happen. Many many things can happen. And um, when I remember before I go to Greece, when I finally got my papers and I was getting my ticket to go back to Greece, I was talking with a friend, and my friend said it said to me, "Man, you're gonna come back." And honestly, I promise you, you and I want like the very next day to leave. And I'm like, come on, this is not just as bad. This is it's it's that bad. So when I went back, like you said, you you advancing progressively, and you know you're growing up. Besides besides the negative things that the, the United States has in every country, um, there is also this this very huge positive ones that they they they. In, the impact in your life, like in such a level, like like no other, of how to progress with uh, the the, the self development that it gives you. Of this, is the land of opportunity, and I believe will never stop being a land of opportunity. The system is is perfect to be whoever you want, and you can become whatever you want um, if you put down the work and the action, and you're gonna make it. So, when I after nine years having and transforming my, my brain in, and rewiring my brain that I live in this country and all these nine years I was recrafting my brain and, you know, crafting my character and my personality, went back to Greece and actually saw everything. I felt that everything, wow, it, it was it was a huge shock. Everything, it was... Um, it's a reverse wow, culture. That's the worst country on the planet. <laughs> that I that I felt like I I didn't feel like home. I felt like a stranger. Uh, I felt like uh, everything everything I knew for these twenty two years that I grew up in Greece was uh, wrong. Um, I was growing up in a in an environment that it was kind of was taking me nowhere. Uh, the 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 culture, the habits, the routine, uh, the neighborhoods the conversations, the way of talking, the way of acting, uh, everything, honestly, everything. After the day, after the, so, so the day, the very next day when I, when, when I was in Greece, uh, I honestly called my friend and I, and I said to him that I, now I believe you that honestly, I just want to go back. And I called my wife. I said to her, like, I want to go back. It was terrible. It was it, it's so emotional. I, I couldn't believe it. From there. Yeah. The whole, the whole the whole country actually i feel like is i feel like the whole country is like one ghetto because i traveled to uh to athens and outside of athens and you could see you could see beautiful places with beautiful people but as the majority one 
you could see the people acting even on on those beautiful places acting like this one like they, they are in the ghetto area so people that would maybe they would yell uh no offense for the smokers but smoking a lot people that don't respect the the, the person right next to them you know about the smoke or whatever um and you know the attitude it, it, you see it's it's kind of the a lower level than the, the country you are in mm -hmm. and uh and also that kind of remain the same as before and you're like this has been like 10 years and still the same and also this those 10 years you went to a different place in your mind and um it and has. i'm not the only it's not even there it's it's it went back i i feel you i completely get you india is currently in the same position <laughs> And, and it's not, and this is just, it's not just me, you know, I spoke with other people and, and they were telling me the same thing. I have, for example, uh, a friend that lives in Germany and he stayed seven years and then he went back after seven years and he was telling me the same thing. I have people in England, they're telling me the same thing. I have people, uh, they're going to, um, what was it, Sweden? And they went back and then told me that many of my friends, they left the country after I left. They just, many people, they left the country as well. And everybody has, is sharing the same story, that when they went back, it was a strange place. Um, and this is unfortunate for the country, um, of course. And for us too, because, you know, I had a dream to, I had dreams for nine years to go back and just, you know, I had this passion to go back. And once I went back, I was like, wow, it's just, it, it's so sad. I just want to go back to uh, to the States, to my family, to my wife, to my to my kid. And... Is it's sad because you rename what is home, mm. you know. True. So now home is a different country, and and now home is a different country. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think is like mostly? You know, what I believe is when a country degrades in in this manner, uh, mm -hmm. most of it comes from a very political back, uh, you know, gov uh, background. Things happen, politically things happen, and the country degrades. Uh, that kind of has trickles down into individual lives and people's attitude change. Uh, mm -hmm. People are driven in in certain direction towards the direction of hate. Uh, you know, I mean, at least that's what's happening in India. Uh, yeah. The last five years, six, seven years, I would say, with the current government, it's been difficult and it's getting difficult each day. And that you can see coming down to the general public because people don't get employment, people don't get other facilities and kind of that frustrates them. And I think that comes out. Uh, and then we say that people have not evolved or, you know, they have not, uh, they don't have a self-growth attitude. Um, so what do you think? Like, is, is that, because I know I have read somewhere uh, maybe a few months back about Greece or might have saw, uh, saw some video where, uh, you know, there's a lot of unemployment in Greece. Uh, young um, young population is really, you know, um, stressed out about not getting jobs, uh, not getting paid well. Uh, so, what do you think is like being from a being from Greece? What do you think are are the the culprits for for you know the situation that you have described? Yeah, um, definitely, definitely, political situation uh, is affecting uh, the people uh, in Greece. Uh, I grew up. In, in this environment and it was always uh oh the republicans do this and oh no the democrats and they keep going every four years you know the first four years they blame the right then the next four years they're gonna blame the left and then the right and then the left and again and again the people take place the people take position into it and families are separating because of the political beliefs and there's so many things and it's so sad because that that's the thing when and also, I believe that's where you see the education level as well, because um, you can tell by how how a country behaves during sports. That's what I say since day one, because when I came, funny story, very quick, I came to the United States, a dream come true was to go to NBA game. And uh, I'm in Massachusetts, Boston, Boston Celtics, but I'm a fan of San Antonio Spurs, that is in Texas. So I grew up in an environment in Greece that, you know, when you go to, to watch sports like soccer or football or, or basket, whatever, you cannot be the opposite team. Otherwise, somebody's going to beat you up. Though you might get killed. 
<laughs> might rip your shirt, they might punch you in the face. Something is going to happen to you, something that is not going to be nice. Mm -hmm. And then, so I have my shirt, the San Antonio uh, shirt now. I have it through, inside. I have my jacket over. And I got a very good seat, whatever, because your dream come true. And I'm sitting now um, under the box that is all like the VIP Celtics, whatever. And it's my first game. And now everybody's all green. And I'm the only one now. I have a certain, you know, under my jacket that is black and white, that is gray and white, that is the San Antonio. And, and I see everybody, you know, everybody's friendly, everybody's beautiful. And I'm asking the, the guy on my right, I say, can I ask you something? He says, yeah. Um, what is going to happen here if you have like a San Antonio uh, Spurs uh, fan? And he says to me, what do you mean? I'm like, are you going to get uh, upset? He says to me, no, I don't care. And I'm like, what if, for example, because I'm San Antonio, and I'm showing him the shirt now, and I'm like, I'm San Antonio. Let's, let's say, for example, Tony Parker, the three-pointer guy that he's retired now, but back then he was one of the best. I'm like, he puts a three points for the Celtics, and you know, I guess the Celtics, and I like, just clapping, just jumping, and whatever. Are you going to do anything? He says, no, man, I don't care. And I'm like, really now? He says to me, yeah. I'm like, okay. So I took my jacket off, and uh, you know, it was the best game the, the best game I ever I ever been. It was unbelievable. San Antonio Spurs over there, you know, on the other side, all over the all over the state, mixed up with the greens, right? And this is since then. That was uh, November, uh, I believe, 2000, 2012. Since then, um, I honestly my belief changed to the point of you see people how uh, you see the people's personality and their beliefs, how they react with political. How the acting towards the, the the waitress and the waiter, and also uh, in the sports, and uh, that's something that is so bad when you are in Greece. How they 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 never you know they always try to abuse whatever they go. Uh, for example, restaurants or whatever, just to maybe the you know the tip or whatever, maybe you give less or or whatever. Um, the sports, they beating each other. They can become bloody and very bad. And also the pol the political beliefs that they, you see people, you see families separating, mm -hmm. and um, that still exists and is very bad. People are polarized in in a way like you know. Um, yeah. Similar sort yeah. of similar things are happening in India currently. People are polarized on religion. You might mm -hmm. be hearing a lot, lot of mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, this thing, um, but. Um, it was good to hear that the story was wonderful. Um, I, I'm assuming that was your American dream, if you had any. No, no. What was your American dream? <laughs> uh, I'm working towards it. Uh, my my dream is to become a public speaker and share a stage with Tony Robbins. And oh, wow. yeah, that's my dream. I met him two months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it was honestly a dream come true. I... 2,000 people crowd, and I was the only one meeting him. And, you know, because I went the extra mile, how to find him. And, you know, we spoke a little bit, and I was crying like a, like a little kid uh, from happiness. And now I'm uh, into the real estate. I'm a real estate agent, and I'm working towards it. I'm trying to help people find their, their own better home. Um, and because I'm, I like to serve people, but my my dream, my life dream, is to become a public speaker and share a, share a stage um, with one of the of the big ones. I really hope um, you achieve. Thank your you. Um, thank you so much. Uh, any last uh, parting thoughts for our viewers? And we would really appreciate if you could say something in Greece. Yeah, I would say someone. Uh, I would say something to anyone. Um, you know, all over the country. Uh, if you in a Greek language, you, you don't mind. Oh, I, I will, I will, I will, a hundred percent. But uh, as my my personal advice, if you don't like where you are, you have you have the opportunity to leave and start a new life anywhere on the planet. Uh, just you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. Uh, it's gonna be very tough in the beginning. Uh, but you know, I promise you, uh, it's worth it. And in in Greek, um. Θα, θα ήθελα να πω να μην, uh, να μην, εγκαταλείβετε, να μην εγκαταλείψετε τα όνειρά σα. Μπορείτε να κάνετε ό,τι uh, έχετε στο μυαλό σα. Και με ένα βήμα τη φορά όλα γίνονται σε αυτή τη ζωή. Thank you so much. That sounds really wonderful, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like a, like a melody.
<laughs> Thank you so much. And I Thank really you, hope uh, from our whole team uh, that all your hopes and wishes come true. You become a public speaker and we get to hear you someday and see you on TV. I hope everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Sujata. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for uh, for giving this opportunity to share a message and inspire other people. And so they believe, you know, they can do it and not give up. Of course. Thank you, thank everyone, you so much. for watching my immigration story. I am your host, Sujata Ramteke. You can watch this show on local channels and on our website, fcatv.org. I'll see you next time.